so uh, do you want to hear my top three? No. Yeah, you don't? Sure. Well, yeah. well, you're going to hear it. I, you want to hear it, but are you going to like it? That's a definite no. All right, let's go with it. Well, it, it could be. Okay. In the beginning of the season, I saw Tim Thomas, like everyone else thought, Tim Thomas was the most important player. Now, I'm going to put him at number three. Mm -hmm. Because with the way he perf has performed so far, he's given up a couple goals here, uh, sh one goal here, and then gave up three more goals. So it's kind of a fluctuating number there. But it's seeing this team, it's, Tim Thomas isn't the issue, and it's not like the ga him, he's not the reason why the Bruins are losing these games. So for that reason, I'll give him number three. Number two has to be Zdeno Chara. No question about it. I'm not just be saying that because he's the captain. I'm saying that you're looking at total ice time, and this is the same as the playoffs and even last season. This guy's on the ice for a league record amount. Just He he's, leads the league in ice time. He needs to be out there with Dennis Seidenberg. I was going to give Chara slash Seidenberg number two, just kind of like you need that defensive front line. Uh, yeah, comments? Ch I, I think Chara is underappreciated in the league, and I, he was probably underappreciated by me for the first few years. What he does for this team is uh, above and beyond. And, the, amount, the work ethic that he puts in, the, the beast that this man is, um, that's why they signed him at age 32 to another seven-year deal last year because his physical condition is not going to break. He, you know, the only time he is injured if, is if it's a bone or if something breaks. Have you seen that picture of him from ESPN the magazine? No. Oh, my God. It's like, it's literally Zidane Ochara naked. <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. It's like him and the muscles that are on his body... It's, it's, I think it may be waist up or something, or like maybe like thigh, I don't know. But the muscles on this guy's body were just almost unhuman. It, it was insane. You, you should probably Google this or check it out eventually after a show or something. But it, it was freakish. And this guy, like you said before, 32 years old, um, I went to a game a few years back when we first got him in 06. And I, it was the closest I've ever been in a game. I was row seven. And watching a hockey game from the lower tiers is absolutely amazing. You get the hits, and you can, the players are literally at your level. It's, it's remarkable. And speaking of that, seeing Zdeno Chara at that level, oh, my God, this guy was towered over everyone. He's so tall, and that's why he's such a good defender. He can reach out to people. He can get the puck out of there. Uh, granted, his stick hand, his puck handling is not the best. We, we all know that. Because every time he holds a puck, we're all screaming for him to pass it or get rid of it because someone's always trying at him. But I'll, I'll get back to my number one player. And the number one player right now has to be Brad Marchand. And I know, I know you think it's Tyler Sagan, but Tyler Sagan right now is on a line that, like, who cares about? What is he, line three with Peverly? No, not even, it's uh, Chris Kelly and Campbell? Is that um, line three? Line three for would the be forwards. Chris Kelly. Yep. Sagan. Sagan. And I'm drawing a blank. I, oh, it would be uh, Benoit Puglia. You're right. Okay. Thank you. But I'm saying that Marshawn is get the up. most... <laughs> get up. I'm saying that Marshawn is the most important person on this team just because of seeing the second line forwards is just unreal. And unreal in a great way. This He is after every puck. He is probably leading the team in shots right now. I don't have an exact number for you. But he every time he gets the puck, he's close to the net, trying to get it in there. And the issue so far with this team is not rebounding the puck. But the combination of him and Bergeron on the same line is remarkable. And I'm saying that if you get Tyler Sagan, and just if you want to try this during the middle of the season, put him with those two guys. I know you're trying to make Sagan a center, mm -hmm. but, you know, just put him at left wing. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, Bergeron's center and Marshawn's right wing, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so I, I'm saying try to put him at a wing and have those three guys attack the puck and use their speed, and you will see so many goals, I'm and, telling you. And I agree to that. It, Tyler Sagan does not need to be center right now. Um, I'd like him to develop into that role. They, the Boston Bruins need to decide whether he's going to be a center or a wing going forward for the rest of his career. The next uh, year or so is going to determine that and really his development. But I like that idea that you had with um, Tyler uh, Bergeron and Marsha. How, the same how amazing would that be? That, yeah. is, that is like your future all in just all wrapped, all into one. wrapped right there. And I said it last week, future. Patrice Bergeron is a veteran, eight years at this point. He's 26 years old. I, when you told me he was 26 years old, I, mm -hmm. my jaw just dropped. Mm -hmm. And it's remarkable. It seems like he's been on this team forever, or at least since I've been watching the Bruins. Mm -hmm. And no, I have not been watching them since last year. Mm -hmm. I know that he's been on the team for a while. Get that gold hat off. Gold hat, again, is the, co the phrase we coined a few weeks ago. Um, you got your pink hat Red, Red Sox fans, and now your gold hat Bruins fans that jumped on board after the Stanley Cup. So, 
the, so that's my top three right there mm-hmm. for players. I, I think that if without these guys in particular, you're looking at a team that could just be way worse. I'm talking about like Ottawa Senators, mm-hmm. bad, like just like horrendous. And I just looked it up right now. Brad Marsha and Tyler Sagan uh, tied for the most points in on the team, mm-hmm. four points apiece. Uh, Brad Marsha and two goals, two assists. Tyler Sagan, one goal, three assists, uh, and that spells it out right there. Again, it's a small sample to choose from. It's only a weekend, only four games in, but, um, you know, a lot could happen from this point on. Mm-hmm. And those assists and goals, I'm pretty sure, if not all of them, most of those points came from that Tampa Bay Lightning game. Mm-hmm. And that team, that Bruins team I saw in the second game of the season versus the Lightning looked amazing in a 4-1 victory. Well, let's get into that. How come this team, and they did it last year, and this is what I talk about, the lackadaisical uh, stance that they have. How come this team can play with grit, play with grind and um, physicality and ability versus a team like, uh, the, the excuse me, not the Capitals, the Tampa Bay Lightning, and then they come out, out against uh, Philly and the Avalanche and Carolina, and they kind of lay back on their heels. They sit around, and they're not physical. Why, why is that? Okay, I went to I went to the Avalanche game where Tuga was in that, and it was a one nothing loss, and Tuga looked amazing except for one goal that went under his pads and all that stuff. But I'm I'm just saying the first three minutes of that game, I was expecting a goal, and obviously I was expecting a goal for the whole time just because of the way that it seemed like there were so many open net opportunities. But the way that this offense was attacking, and it was even in the game versus the Hurricane, the Bruins start off so quickly and they attack as much as possible, and then all of a sudden a pow- they'll get a penalty in the first five minutes, and then it's just like, whew, gone. You're on, you play defense for the last 55 minutes, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Yeah, um, I don't understand it. Uh, this team has the physicality, but you got have guys like Milan Lucic who, you know, something has to be wrong with this guy because he's not playing to his ability. Now, I'll defend him here. He played well in the Hurricanes game, even though he didn't, <laughs> score he was one of the guys that was bringing the puck into the zone and even had a couple opportunities and for him with me it's not about scoring it's about him bringing his you know physicality bringing his game stepping up is what it is to me he needs to take the body he needs to take the hits if he's not going to score a goal this guy needs to hit someone and he's not um okay so i i feel like he's going to be one of these uh one of the answers i ask for this question who do you think are the three bruins that need to improve the most um I'm going to go with, let's see, let's hear your answers first. Okay, well, I didn't really have this one too prepared, but okay. I can tell you my number one right now is Nathan Horton, yep. for sure. Nathan Horton, again, my probably number one. He was offside with a minute to go in the game versus the Hurricanes. When you're down by one goal and you have an empty net, you're offside. What do you think? It's like you're on a power play. You wait, you bring the puck in, and then like that's when you get all your guys in to score. And that play alone really made me angry. And besides the lack of any, um, I doubt any scoring. Does he have any points right now? Um, Do we? Horton has one point. He has one, one assist. One assist. I'm saying that he's not making these goal opportunities. And granted, we're only a few games, four games into the season. But this is the guy that people love now because of how he did in the playoffs with game-winning goals. But we're just not seeing that yet. And mm-hmm. I know that I don't think these guys know that the season has started yet. They they need to start winning. You have 82 games. I know it doesn't. I, I know it seems like a lot, but you need to start get, getting ground and leading the division. Who's your number two and three? Uh, of needing to improve. Yep. Um, I, I put Lucic up there, but the way he performed against the Hurricane, like I said, it kind of won me over ish. I, I think that it was it was a good enough performance that you know kind of persuaded me. And for number three, not that he's done anything wrong thus far, but Rich Peverly. If you got signed to a three-year deal, you need to start stepping up and proving why you're signed to a three-year mm-hmm. deal. And you know what, your three probably match my three. Okay. Um. I agree. I said it a week or two ago, Nathan Horton needs to step up right now. He needs to be that 30-plus goal scorer that he, we all know he can yes. be. And you know what? You know what's uh, pretty interesting about both of our lists? Zero defense, zero goalies. All the issues are on offense. Mm-hmm. We know that Tim Thomas can make the saves. We know Char and Seidenberg can make the stops on defense. But we do not know if this team can score. Mm-hmm. And they've yet to prove that. 